Thank you both for the invitation and for Sages for the privilege of the podium. Um, Brian set me up really nicely with this talk and the data that he highlighted, and so um, I, will, I will share some of that with you. Let's see if we can get this to go forward. Uh, these are my disclosures, which are not really germane to this talk. Um, by way of outline, we'll talk about both the anterior component separation and specifically um, the transversus abdominis release, or TAR, uh, for posterior comp complications, and then really what are the potential means to deal with some of these recurrences and surgical site occurrences that can re result. So when you look at anterior component separation, which um, we won't get into specific detail about, there are pitfalls in the technique that can lead to complications, both acute and potentially long-term complications. And one of those is to destabilize the abdominal wall. And the result of that may be a technical error, such that you cut more than one layer or you cut inappropriate layers, or you fail to decrease tension on the midline, resulting in a midline that's very tense, which may predispose to hernia recurrence. That may be a technical issue with um, separating the external oblique from the internal oblique and the areolar tissue therein. Um, certainly, there's a risk of surgical site infection, and I, you've seen some of the data to demonstrate that in the um, open anterior component versus posterior component separation, the risk of surgical site occurrence is higher, and I'll highlight some of that data. And then you also have to worry about lateral hernia recurrences as well. You've now cut the external oblique aponeurosis if that is left wide open or isn't addressed or, or potentially covered with mesh, you may predispose to hernia recurrence there. So I highlighted the fact that you don't want to destabilize the abdominal wall. The way you can do that is, is by cutting the external oblique and the internal oblique simultaneously. Um, that's not ideal and basically results in only the transversalis holding everything together, and it's not really sufficiently strong enough to do that. The other option um, for making a technical error is to cut um, both the external oblique aponeurosis and the transversus abdominis muscle. So um, I've actually um, been called into cases where an anterior component separation was performed. They felt there was not adequate medialization of the midline. They had heard about or read about tar somewhere, and so they went from the intraperitoneal surface and cut the transversalis muscle, um, uh, transversus abdominis muscle from the inside. So, so these are technical things that you obviously want to avoid um, due to the instability. The other thing besides those issues that may predispose to risk are the fact that many of these operations are performed with concomitant procedures, whether that's a simple cholecystectomy or something more involved. And um, when a concomitant procedure is performed in this setting, it also increases the risk for reoperation, so you need to consider that when you're perhaps choosing your mesh choice, and also the fact that it increases overall morbidity, particularly surgical site occurrence and surgical site infection. That may be related to the concomitant procedure, but it's still something you have to deal with after having reconstructed the abdominal wall. So keep that in mind. Um, Brian highlighted this very nicely about understanding your mesh strategy. Mesh plays a significant role. Both its location, type, size, and fixation strategies may predispose to complications and or hernia recurrence in the long term. Um, not only the material that you place, the size of the, that material and how you choose to fixate it and with what uh, may impact that complication rate. So finally, when you're thinking about um, all of these complications, the end of the road is potentially hernia recurrence, uh, among other complications that can occur, and what are the most likely technical failures of ACS um, uh, recurrences. We highlighted destabilizing the abdominal wall. Um, and the inability to achieve adequate medialization of the uh, rectus complex. Com um, concomitant procedures can increase your risk. Um, but so can failing to reinforce all the defects with mesh. So if you have um, cut away the external oblique aponeurosis bilaterally um, and exposed that, there are folks that feel that that needs to be reinforced with mesh. Whether you do that as an onlay, whether you do that with mesh in another position and secure it to the lateralized external oblique, you want to reinforce the defect that you created in the abdominal wall. So what options are available to address recurrent hernias after anterior component separation? Um, and what are those complications? You can see them listed here, um, cardiopulmonary with, um, you, you know, difficulty uh, is pretty common. Uh, we also see intra-abdominal hypertension, but the things that we're going to really talk about are the surgical site occurrences and mesh-related issues and recurrence. 
So when we look at the data in post-op complications after anterior component separation, these are patients only with mesh. So these are synthetic mesh patients uh, that, that I've culled from the data. You can see that the surgical site occurrence ranges between about 7.5 and 48 percent. It's kind of a little bit all over the map. Um, and, and those complications may include skin necrosis, seromas, hematomas, and surgical site infections. The management of those complications varies um, on their severity, as you would suspect. May include anything from debridement, wound therapy, um, procedural intervention, including percutaneous drains, antibiotics, and the like. And many, if not all of you, have managed some component of, if not all of these. Synthetic mesh explant um, is less common. You can see the range there is almost from zero to about 7%. Um, and when there is mesh infection, there is some data to support the fact that complete removal may be best. But there's also a, a push at times to try to salvage mesh, depending on the material and the location of that material. Hernia recurrence, which can range anywhere from about 12 to 17 percent um, in the studies that you see highlighted here, with a mean follow-up anywhere from about 9 or 10 months to 34 months. So what do you do when they have a hernia recurrence? And that's sort of the, the meat of the problem. You can certainly do nothing if they're not a good surgical candidate, and you should consider them, even, even if it was your hernia recurrence and you feel bad for them, if they still don't meet criteria two years later when they have a hernia recurrence, you start back at the beginning with all the usual prehabilitation metrics that we would um, choose for a primary repair. But ultimately, they may undergo operation, um, and this is uh, Paul I's group and others that did a multi-center retrospective review of 29 patients who had recurrent hernia approximately a year after anterior component separation. 14% of those patients also had concomitant peristomal hernias. And this particular group pretty much did everything um, the same way across these patient cohorts, and they all underwent TAR essentially procedurally the same. You can see that the hernia characteristics are highlighted there. Most of these were midline hernias. Most of them were um, substantial in size in grade two and grade three. And what did they find? Well, their surgical site occurrence rate was about 45%. Uh, most of which were surgical site infections. Uh, that shouldn't particularly surprise anyone with hernia defects of, of the size and hernia grades of the size uh, of the patients in this study. Um, only one patient had a mesh explant. That was essentially due to the fact that um, that patient was then considered the hernia recurrence um, uh, with a mean follow-up of about 11 months. So what is the take-home message here? Well, there, there's not zero morbidity associated with um, posterior component separation after anterior component separation. While, while effective, you have to understand that it's going to come with, with, a, with an appreciable morbidity. Um, but there are advantages, including avoidance of subcutaneous flaps, potential nerve injury, um, and the potential placement of intraperitoneal mesh, as may be the case if you choose IPOM as your uh, strategy to repair recurrent hernia after anterior component separation. What about TAR? So if we look at the same thing, TAR also has its technical um, issues, um, such that you can also destabilize the abdominal wall, much like you can after an anterior component separation. You do this by potentially injuring the linea semilunaris. Um, you can miss inguinal hernias that then present postoperatively after you've increased intra-abdominal pressure due to an adequate reconstruction of their midline. So inspecting for that and repairing those at the time. Uh, you can also create intraperitoneal hernias if your posterior sheath is not adequately closed or if there are holes in the peritoneum that, that are missed and, and are not repaired. So it's important to ensure proper technique to really prevent uh, these complications and avoid injury to things like the intercostal bundles, which may result in atrophy of the muscle over time and hernia recurrence. But what we do know is the postoperative complications after open tar with mesh seem to be less than that after open anterior component separation. Um, in this study, again, um, by Paul I's group, you can see that in general, the posterior component separation risks associated with total wound complications, seromas, and surgical site infections were in general lower than that of those who underwent anterior component separation. So can we improve it even more? Well, um, there are two studies now that demonstrate or look at robotic, uh, minimally invasive TAR after uh, compared to open TAR and in matched cohorts. And what, what these studies have demonstrated, this one here as well, shows that there's a trend toward lower frequency and severity of complications. There's also 
other potential benefits like shorter hospital length of stay, which isn't specific to this talk. But while these may not reach statistical significance, I think we can see that there's a potential clinical trend in approaching these with a minimally invasive, um, in a minimally invasive fashion. So what about the complications? Well, hernia recurrence, um, in particular after TAR, poses a significant challenge. Um, in a uh, recent systematic analysis, uh, they showed a pooled hernia recurrence rate of about 5.25%. But if you look at some papers, they range anywhere from perfect to 75%. It's all over the map. Um, and the follow-up is not lengthy at yet. So we don't know necessarily what our 10-year data uh, look like in a, in a statistically meaningful way. So again, how do you manage these complications, these recurrences after TAR? Certainly, all the prehabilitation rules still apply. You can choose to do nothing, you can choose to give them a lovely binder, or you can choose to reoperate on them. And so, what are your operative options? Well, again, this is not an exhaustive list because that would take multiple more slides and more alphabet soup than we care to get into. But there are open or minimally invasive approaches, and certainly open approaches may be simple defect closure in high-risk patients. Um, keep in mind that if um, you know, permanent synthetic mesh was utilized during a TAR procedure in, in the retrorectus preperitoneal space, that mesh needs to be reapproximated with permanent suture. Um, otherwise, you risk another recurrence subsequently. You can choose an onlay, um, and in some cases, perhaps an anterior component separation with defect closure. But there's a caveat to that as well. Um, this is not to be done acutely after. If there's an acute recurrence after TAR, perhaps for a technical reason, um, there needs to be a significant period of time that lapses between a TAR and perhaps an open anterior component separation. Um, we don't know the exact amount of time, a year, a year and a half, two years, but but it, it needs to be a more chronic situation so that you don't risk complete destabilization of the abdominal wall. Um, you need some of that scar tissue to help you. Um, and I put retar on here because uh, there are times when a patient may be reported to have undergone TAR, uh, maybe even it's even dictated as such, but based on preoperative imaging or perhaps intraoperative examination, you find that the transversus abdominis muscle was not cut. Um, perhaps it's only a retrorectus placement, and those patients may be amenable to a primary TAR as, as hernia recurrence uh, operation. Many of those procedures can be done minimally invasive as well. Um, in addition, you can choose IPOM uh, in a standard laparoscopic or robotic fashion. You can place some of these meshes in the preperitoneal position if there's been a significant period of time between the TAR um, and your reoperation, uh, depending on the location and the, and the adequacy of the peritoneum. So in summary, really both, both approaches, um, anterior component and posterior component separation, um, as means to manage a complex abdominal wall reconstruction have their complications. Um, there may be in general more in the open than in a minimally invasive type, and there may be more in the anterior than in a posterior comp component separation type. So you need to keep that in mind when selecting an approach based on the patient you have in front of you. Um, and that leads to my second sort of summary point, which is uh, the thoughtful operative choice and sound technique. I think we all understand the importance of the technique, and this sort of highlights some of the potential errors that may lead to complications. But, but before you even get to that point, an appropriate operative choice and having all of this in your armamentarium um, allows you to choose what's best um, for individual patients and the specific hernia they present with. And then finally, addressing recurrence after component separation, as I think Eric highlighted earlier for Ringwinnels and other things, is that you know addressing recurrence after component separation is challenging. Um, you know, if, if open anterior component separation is something that you do and you do well, and, and, and the entire armamentarium of abdominal reconstruction may not be available, um, that may be a patient that is um, served with, with someone who does this quite a bit. Because um, this, you know, may be their last shot at a definitive abdominal reconstruction um, to try to prevent the three, four, five time recurrence. So. Um, that's uh, what I have for us today, and I appreciate the opportunity to present, and I'm happy to entertain any questions. Thank you.